On November 9, 2020, the Peruvian National Congress impeached former President Martin Vizcarra. Peru experienced its greatest political instability in 20 years, with three presidents coming to power in just over a week, resulting in massive protests across the country. Soon after the announcement was made, crowds began to gather at Plaza San Martin in downtown Lima, protesting against the Congress Speaker, Manuel Merino, who had been installed as interim president on November 10. I have never seen so many people protesting for one goal in Lima, people from everywhere, and we all wanted to say no. But the protest intensified. And on November 12th, a national march took place throughout Peru, demanding Merino's resignation. On November 14, thousands of people took to the streets in a second national march. What happened next for me was something that I thought I was not prepared for. I was on the top of a building, photographing the thousands of people gathered in Plaza San Martin. But I had already heard that the people protesting on the corners of Pierola and Abancay avenues were wanting to get closer to Congress and were being blocked by hundreds of police officers. When I arrived, the atmosphere was tense. I immediately put on my protective gear and soon after a spark or maybe a scream or a sudden move unleashed one of the most violent situations I have ever faced. I was afraid, and that was good. It made me protect myself before anything else. It made me feel, and those feelings were what led me to confront the way I was taking images. In a situation like this, you are risking your life. It is an accumulation of emotions. You leave it as if it were yours. I was not there protesting, but I leave my indignation. If I hadn't been there for work, I would have gone anyway. I didn't do this because they pay me. It is an obligation as a Peruvian, as journalist. The people were there. We were all there, protecting themselves, protecting ourselves. Some of them using homemade shields with phrases painted on them that says, the power to the people, and other phrases like the one that really stick to me until, until now, that says, if not today, when? The police repression was something I have never seen before. The amount of tear gas, pellets, rubber bullets, and excessive use of violence did not help at all. It was a violent environment. You were there and you faced the shots. You swallowed the gas. I got shot with several rubber bullets, as did hundreds of other people. All of us Peruvians are disappointed in the people who govern us. They have been promising change for a long time and it was ends the same way. People were upset, tired. The Congress is supposed to be the voice of the people, but they were not listening to us. They didn't speak for us. They only listened to the needs of their own interest and left us in the middle of a deep political crisis, in addition to enduring the attack of the fierce COVID epidemic in Peru. But we keep fighting, fighting for what I'm sure was right. We continue to protect ourselves as best as we could with homemade shields, bodyboards, 
and with the security of knowing that the people will no longer upset the corrupt political class that governed us. I remember standing there at some point, watching some police officers kind of hiding next to a wall with a phrase that says, we live in a false illusion. In Lima, two people were killed and more than a hundred were injured in violent clashes with the police. Manuel Merino resigned on the 15th of November. A new president, Francisco Sagasti, was inaugurated two days later. Thank you very much for all of you, all of you listening to this. My name is Ernesto Benavides, and I am a photographer for the agency France Press. And this was my project, Presidential Vacancy.